Douglas has just actually fallen into the trap of oversimplifying this question. How dare you say? Quite frankly, I, say, I think that is shameful. Well, um, I don't know who appointed um, you the school mom of this debate, well, but let me just explain to you what the facts are on this. I don't believe that we're talking in, in this case about people fleeing poverty. I believe that we are talking about people fleeing war. Well, and you, in, you, if we are... With all respect, you can believe whatever you like, but that is not the reason to Welcome give... Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to be watching a clip of Douglas Murray debating the migrant crisis. And just for some context here guys, the debate is surrounding the topic of whether or not it's ethical to do dental tests on migrants coming from the refugee camp in Calais over to England. Because there are huge amounts of grown men who are pretending to be children and saying that they're underage so that they can get quick access into England. It's destruction day. <laughs> and toward the end of this one, the liberal delusion about immigration really comes to the fore. And I will be proving to you guys how illogical and unreasonable this is with an argument that I think is impenetrable. So let's get into it. But the migrants by doing this are not abiding by the rules and the laws that are meant to exist in Europe. So when they arrive in Calais, they are already uh, having, they're already in contravention of the, the, the laws that we're meant to have, which, as I say, is meant that they should have claimed asylum when they arrived in Italy or in Greece. They should not have ended up in Calais. And once they're breaking those rules and ending up in Calais, this country does not owe them a duty. Secondly, on this, issue, on this issue approach. of uh, whether or not they're all refugees, they are not all refugees. By the, um, by the statement by, made by, for instance, the Vice Commissioner of the European, uh, uh, um, the Vice President of the European Commission, Franz Timmermans, earlier this year, of the people who arrived last year alone, uh, the European Commission says that around 60% of them have no more right than anyone else in the world to be claiming asylum but, but in well, Europe. We're so let's so the is, right of people to yes, come here. Is it is, fair to put them through dental right. checks, medical checks of some uh, description to assess whether they are the right people to come to this country? Of course it is. Um, the strange thing about this debate is, if I may say so, the reason why it goes so wrong and why you can hear very nasty things on all sorts of sides at the moment is because we keep on trying to shut down very general and sometimes very practical suggestions. David Davies is not the Prime Minister. He is a backbench MP and he suggested on Twitter that maybe people could have dental checks. Now dental checks are one of the ways on the continent which people use to try to work out the age of people who claim to be refugees and who are migrants, some of them whom are refugees. That is one way of doing it. But there's a very strange reaction we have of trying to shut down and shut up anyone making such a suggestion. Our continent is in a crisis on this question at the moment. And instead of addressing the roots of that crisis, instead of addressing the huge things that are happening, we have these weird debates about what one backbench MP has said about people's teeth. This is well, not a I, I suitable think my point way. that Samantha's making is what does it say about us as a country? Well, it says about us that we need to have a legal manner of allowing people into this country. And it is appropriate that we find some way of testing their age. If, and if you don't the, like teeth, you've got to come up with another way. Paperwork because of circumstance, but are absolutely. they not? Absolutely. And I think that's the very, very germane point you just made without paperwork because of circumstances and may I just say regrettably despite what is his rather extensive experience in this area um, Douglas has just actually fallen into the trap of oversimplifying this question oversimplifying the issue I mean how really Douglas how dare you say that those people who are coming from countries other than Syria are not refugees and do not have a right to be in this country how dare you say that simply because they may have ended up in one other European country before they found their way to Calais we do not owe them a duty that is I, I quite frankly I say I think that is shameful well um, I don't know who appointed um, you the school mom of this debate well, but let me just explain to you what the facts are on this guys just before we finish this clip off if you're enjoying this video and if you want to see it go far and wide don't forget to check a like on this and also if you're getting value from this subscribe to the channel back into it uh, we do owe an asylum uh, uh, a legitimate asylum to people who are genuinely fleeing war and conflict however as i say if the european commission's own figures of 60 percent uh, which they came up with with frontex of last year of people are not people with any right to be here. We have to address this and it comes back to it again you see. Instead of addressing it we have the how dare you's, the I think this is appalling, you, this, is sh this is shameful. Because oh, we can't sides, actually, have, don't because, we? Well I haven't said that of course, I, I find my fellow guests here to simply have different views from me. But this is the problem with this debate. 
millions of people have come into Europe and millions more will be coming and our continent probably cannot cope with that. Now I suggest that in order to deal with this very large problem we have a very wide ranging discussion but if we try to school marm it and shut it down as you've tried with David Davies and as you've just tried not very subtly with me we can't get anywhere. Can I just make one comment? Douglas has said, he, he, you made one point which I think is, is actually the very point about oversimplification. You say the continent is in crisis. Douglas, I beg to differ. The world is in crisis. And actually that is the issue that we all need to take on board. It's not simply a case of, oh, let's ring fence Europe and let's protect Europe and let's shut our eyes to what is going on in the rest of the world. And really that is what I think the debate is about. So this is a tough one and not because there is any debate about whether they should do the dental tests because obviously they do. It's tough because with men from the Middle East and various different parts of Europe, you genuinely can't tell how old they are sometimes. I mean, a lot of my friends growing up were Turkish, Albanian, Lebanese, etc. And some of these guys, when they were 16, could have genuinely passed for a 40-year-old man with six kids and three wives. She oldest woman in the whole of Kusek. She is a 43. So, I mean, that is the real confusion here. But seriously, it's embarrassing that the conversation is about whether or not we should be checking these people's ages and not why the hell they're there in the first place. And like Douglas said throughout this video a few times, a lot of these people aren't real asylum seekers and refugees. A lot of these people are economic migrants. A lot of them are just opportunistic people who are just exploiting the soft European immigration system because they can and you can't really blame them. If I was living out in the back ass of Pakistan somewhere and then Rajmal comes up to me and he says, all we have to do is go to England and say that we're 17 and they'll let us into this country and we can just access all of their social welfare and they'll put us up in a nice hotel and probably give us a debit card, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. So Douglas Murray is right about this one and that's why she had to go full on Greta Thunberg, how dare you? How dare you? Because from her side of the debate, all you can really do is virtue signal and argue from emotion. Now more on that point in the coming section. Wow. But do we have to prioritise and therefore when there are genuine child migrants in the most vulnerable situations and desperate to get out. The jungle camp in Calais is going to be demolished within a matter of days. Do we not have to ensure that the right people are given asylum in this country and therefore it may be regrettable but are those tests not what is needed? I think that we absolutely do have to ensure that the right people are granted asylum. Age tests are actually normal and, and part of the process in uh, uh, asylum law and actually in other areas of law. You'll find that in family law and also in criminal law. But the way but that the age tests are applied go. at the moment it, it is is by appearance, it, it, isn't it, and behaviour, which, which has been proven by the Home Office figures not to be working. But my, my point, the point I'm trying to make is this, that do we focus on the appearance and say that these children um, appear, in fact this is the real problem with the, the, the current state of the debate. We're saying, and people I would say who are on the other side of the debate, suggest that because certain people appear to be older, they should not even be brought to this country to even be assessed. At the expense and of others. Yes, you see, this is the problem, is that these well, people who have jumped actually, the queue they and have then lied checks. about their identity. They go through rigorous checks in Calais, mm. and, and there are organisations within Calais, for, for, such as Citizens UK, who can tell you, who can give you chapter and verse on the types of checks that are done in Calais. So the fact that certain people may arrive in the UK looking a bit older, people who, by the way, have gone through war, have gone through absolutely harrowing emotional no, experiences. Can I just, this debate can I just, is questioning can I just, the, the need, but it is questioning no, whether or not... Sorry, we uh, do need to question the need on this, because as I say, I reiterate, there is already legitimate uh, uh, grounds for people from Syria fleeing Syrian civil war to claim asylum. But, but that but is if a wider you, debate, if you, isn't sorry, it? If what we're looking just, at specifically yes. here, Douglas, if you don't mind, what we're looking at specifically here is whether or not it is right to have medical checks to yes. assess and age we, and whether those people said, should I've be just said asylum. that it is, and actually you have just said that it is. It is legitimate to check people's yes. ages. Yes, I do. Uh, so we're in agreement on this. But where we're not on agreement, which is why I come back to it, is that all of the people in Calais have, for instance, fled war. They haven't. If you go 
to Calais, and if you go to the points of entry, like the Italian points of entry, most of the people are fleeing from sub-Saharan Africa and have no more right to claim asylum is, is than anyone else in, in the Croydon world. This week, are they too, are they older than they should be? Some people suggesting that they might be in their mid twenties up yes. to thirty, and does that then raise a child protection issues? But are we then giving them places at the expense of others who are desperately of in need? Of course we are. Of I don't think we are. we are actually. I don't think we are giving them places at the expense of others who are in need, and that's the real point here. They are going through rigorous checks in Calais to ensure that they are of the age that they ought to be to fall within the legislation. Now, one or two may slip through the net. I don't deny. Two thirds slipped through well, the net according to the Home Office figures. So yes, last days. year. Last year, that's quite right. They said that out of the 933 or so, 626 were a little older. A little older. Now, we're not talking about men of 40 and 35 entering the United Kingdom. We're talking about people of perhaps, as opposed to 17, 20 or 21. Uh, Let us consider what their lost years. A, a year make in terms of need? Uh, and that's the real question. Out of 933 or so, 626 were a little bit older. That means that there were 626 adults pretending to be children. How on earth do you just brush that aside? It's sort of like, oh yeah, no big deal. Just a few. That is outrageous. They're going to be now treated like children and maybe given a foster home or put in a program around other children. Who knows, they may even have to go to a school. That's just crazy to me. I mean, Europe is just so unbelievably soft and it's so frustrating to see because they're facilitating their own demise. And this is just a comical example of how they're doing it. I mean, how is it even a second thought to at least find out how old they are before they come into your country, these random people from different countries, and use your social welfare and pose potentially a danger to the public. Like, imagine somebody just rocks up at your front door and just comes to live in your house, and then you ask them how old they are, and they say no. That's unethical. How dare you? But the not-so-comical part about all this is the bigger picture, which is that if you have a white, Christian, European population, that is currently below replacement birth rate, and you take those countries and you inundate them with people from the third world who have an average of like six children, then what you are looking at is the extermination of an entire culture. And if you think about it, they have kids and then their kids have kids and kids have kids, and it is a compounding effect. I like sex. It's nice. As the white European population shrinks, theirs just grows. So within a few generations, we are going to see white Christian Europeans as minorities in all major European countries. I mean, this will very likely happen in my lifetime. And then before too long, most of these countries will be Muslim as well. So on that depressing note, let's get into the last clip. The question is whether or not you reward people, first of all, breaking the rules by ending up in Calais, and secondly, reward them by allowing them to lie and getting away with it. And I think this is a very unwise thing to encourage. There is already a process in Europe for people to claim asylum. If you reward people who jump ahead of that queue and you reward people who lie, including it lying about their age, about it's very we think unwise. About what a lot of these people have been I through to get there in the first I reiterate place. the point. If you go to the points of entry, you will see that most of the people coming into Europe have no more right to be here than anybody else in the world. They are fleeing poverty. They are fleeing situations and that we in Europe have a right to be here. No, no, no the, uh, sorry, can I just correct you on this? Because this is a very important uh, dis uh, disagreement. No. Everyone in the in the world who is poor does not have the right to come to Europe. They do not. That's we do right. not want Douglas, them here. Douglas, we do not want them here. We cannot afford them. We cannot uh, um, integrate them. We cannot afford Douglas, to keep them here. Douglas, that's quite right, and that's not actually the status of this debate. You know, that's not the question, and I'm I'm shutting you down on talking about poverty because I think that you're obfuscating the. Poverty. Because no, because you just you said no you just said. Sorry, you were interrupting me to say does does being poor not you, is it not you, a reason to come here? And I'm saying no, it is being not. Being poor is some a reason that certain people, and I think you need to look at what you call poverty. You need to look at some of the circumstances that some of these people may be living in that yes. you call economic migration, but yes. in fact is something quite different. Well, we are talking here about vulnerable children who are living in the Calais jungle. I don't believe that we're talking in, in this case about people fleeing poverty. I believe that we are talking about people fleeing war. Well, and you, if you, we with are... With all due respect, you can if, believe whatever you like, but that is not the reason to give the, uh, make the British government allow and reward people who break rules. We have a policy to give people asylum. You cannot have a policy that then rewards people who break the law and who then lie. So are you saying that regardless of age, people, vulnerable children in the Calais jungle, however they may have got there, shouldn't be given 
a place in no, this country? I'm saying that we need a proper system of, of, of assessing people's desires and their wants and their claims. Uh, and, and in the and, meantime, and, with, the, and with so, the jungle due to be demolished, but, what do we do? Well, clearly, this is part of the process of trying to speed up the emptying of the so-called jungle in Calais. And the government here has obviously agreed to wave some people through more easily than they would have done in order to help the French authorities close the so-called jungle. But, you know, please, in this country, we always get obsessed with a few thousand people in Calais and people always say, if we, could, we can bring these people in. They have no understanding of what comes after when you reward illegal entry. I listened to a very interesting interview this morning with a lady who had been a foster carer for a young man who'd come from Syria. She then found out that he was 21 mm. and not 14, as she believed. So precisely the type of case we're talking about. And, and she was that asked, is what David Davis raised about child protection absolutely, issues. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that there is an issue there and we do need to conduct the checks and we do need to ensure that the law is properly applied. However, I think that we also need to be careful how we do so, so that we don't also breach our own humanitarian obligations okay. and go beyond and outside the spirit of the law. So where does compassion come into all of this, guys? Our first concern here should be compassion. Well, this cannot be a conversation about compassion because the world is such a messed up place with so much poverty and desperation that if we let everybody into Europe and America and Australia that we feel sorry for, then we would be looking at billions and billions of people, which would collapse those countries as well. So no, Compassion shouldn't really factor in. And so with that, guys, I will leave you with this clip that for me is the most compelling demonstration that I've seen about why this compassion approach is actually the worst for everybody. Some people say that mass immigration into the United States can help reduce world poverty. Is that true? Well, no, it's not. And let me show you why. This gumball represents the 1 million legal immigrants that the United States has taken every year on average since 1990. Now, who in the world deserves our humanitarian compassion? The World Bank has one measure of the desperately poor of the world. They make less than $2 a day. And how many people make less than $2 a day in the world? Well, let's start with Africa. In Africa alone, there are 650 million people who make less than $2 a day, 650 million. And in India, another 890 million people, desperately poor. China adds another 480 million people, making less than $2 a day. And unfortunately, the rest of Asia has a heartbreaking 810 million people who the World Bank say make less than $2 a day. And finally, there's 105 million of Latin America's population that are desperately poor. All told, the World Bank says there are 3 billion people in the world, 3 billion people who are desperately poor, making less than $2 a day. That's 3,000 gumballs. And every year, we take a million and suggest that we have somehow made a humanitarian difference. Of course, we don't pull our immigrants from these desperately poor populations, do we? These people are too poor, too sick, too disconnected to make it here as immigrants. We tend to pull our immigrants out of the better off poor of the world. And Mexico tends to define the type of immigrant that we bring here because the plurality of people come from Mexico. And Mexico is poor. How many people in the world live in countries that have average incomes lower than that of Mexico? And the World Bank tells us that that number is these 3 billion plus another 2.6 billion people. 5.6 billion people in the world who live in countries with average incomes below that of Mexico. That's 5,600 gumballs. And so what is it that the elites are telling us? They're telling us that when we take this one million immigrants, that we somehow or another are tackling world poverty. And we have to do it regardless of the effect on our unemployed, the working poor, the most vulnerable members of our society, regardless of the effect on our natural resources. Even if we went by the most radical proposals in Washington, which are to actually double 
our immigration to two million a year, which would totally overwhelm our physical, natural, and social infrastructures, we couldn't make a noticeable difference. And we may be really hurting the impoverished people of the world because the million that we do take are among the most energetic, often the better educated, certainly the most dissatisfied people that if they did not immigrate would be the agents for change to improve the lot of all the people in these countries. The true heroes in the global humanitarian field are the people in these countries who have the wherewithal to immigrate to another country, but instead stay in their countries to apply their skills to help their fellow countrymen. Unfortunately, our immigration system tends to entice these very type of people to abandon their countrymen. The impossibility of making even a dent is actually worse than it looks here. Because last year when we took one million immigrants, these countries added births over deaths, 80 million more people into the impoverished population. And this year, Congress is bringing in a million legal immigrants. And this year, according to the United Nations, these countries are expected to add another 80 million people. And next year, you can be quite sure that Congress, unless stopped by the American voters, will bring in another million immigrants. And these countries, unfortunately, will be adding another 80 million people into these impoverished nations. We could take five million a year, but we'd never get ahead of what's happening in these countries, not in this century. Don't you see, immigration can never be an effective or significant way to deal with the suffering people of the world. They have to be helped where they live. 99.9% .9 of them will never be able to immigrate to a rich country. There's no hope for that. They have to bloom where they're planted. The only place that 99.9% .9 of these people can be helped is where they live. Let's help them there.